Hello guys, Garuda here with another video. Today I want to talk about the Emerald Dream, a custom raid on Duskhaven Vanilla Plus. The Emerald Dream has near mythical proportions in Warcraft lore, and for years players on retail have been clamoring for this raid or zone to be added, and Blizzard never really implemented it, although all the way back in Vanilla, there were already rudimentary designs in the game for this zone. Duskhaven's developer has taken up Blizzard's slack and developed a completely custom raid from scratch. Is it any good? Is it any fun? Let's find out. If you like this kind of content and want to see more of it for free, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. It really helps. First off, some general information about the raid. You can access the Emerald Dream via the northeastern corner of Hygel, or just stand on the graveyard near Sentinel Hill or the crossroads. For some reason, this will also teleport you to the raid. Once you're inside, it's important to adjust your graphic settings and disable specular lighting, otherwise it'll look annoyingly bright green. If you're lagging, disable the transmog add-on, any other add-ons you don't really need, and lower your video settings. There's no attunement, and gear level-wise, the loot that drops here is tier 2, Blackwing Lair stuff, so ideally your raid is decked out in Mythic Plus and tier 1 stuff. Anything lower, especially on tanks and healers, will cause wipes. The Emerald Dream isn't that hard, but there are some bosses which can definitely cause issues if your raid isn't up to the task. Alright, let's get into the bosses. There are 6 in total, and they can be done in any order. You can mount up to run through the raid. It's important to note that if you die, you can just run back and rejoin the fight. The closest and easiest boss is Krablanti, a giant crab, obviously. His main gimmick is Bone Crack, which deals enormous damage to melee range. It's pretty easy to avoid, just move out. He also puts Bleeds, Mortal Strike and other debuffs on a tank, just out heal it or use appropriate cooldowns. It's a pretty easy fight honestly, tank and spank for the most part. Moving on to Watcher Nishera, there's a noticeable increase in mechanics and difficulty. This Dryad will need to be pulled away from her spawn spot to the road, because she's clipping through the ground otherwise. The tank will need to kite her along the road to avoid her most lethal mechanic. If you've ever done Scarlet Monastery Graveyard Mythic Plus, you'll know this one. See the circle of ice forming here on the floor? If you stand in it when it's complete, you'll almost always be killed. It spawns on players, so ranged can just spread out, and melee will need to keep a close eye on it. She sometimes also freezes players in place with a Frost Nova, so have your priest or pala keep an eye on dispelling this ASAP. During the first 50% of her HP, she'll spawn Emerald Welplings, little drakes which cast AoE Frost Bolts. Your tank or off tank will need to grab those. They need to be single targeted or cleaved down. Interrupt the Frost Bolts if you can. At 50% HP, she'll start spawning Emerald Guardians instead. Strong adds which your off tank definitely needs to grab, and your ranged will need to kill. Their gimmick is that if you hit them, you'll take around 1500 frost damage per hit. This seems to be the case for single target DPS only, cleaves seem to be fine. Ishera will be casting uninterruptible frostbolt follies now, and everyone will need to keep moving or jump, as she'll also get intense cold, a stacking debuff like Karistraza in the Nexus, or again, like Blood Mage Talnos in Mythic Plus SM Graveyard. It's a fun fight with a lot of mechanics and plenty of things to do for every player. It's probably my favorite fight in here, it's really great. Next up is Overgrown Ancient, an end. There will be constant AoE damage going out during the fight due to an aura and thorns on the boss. He does an AoE Warstomp to melee and will cast Sunbeam on a random target, causing decent damage to that player's location. Everyone will need to spread out. He'll sometimes put regrowth on himself, dispel if you can, if not it doesn't seem to heal for much. There's also a starfall, but it seems to be bugged, no noticeable damage is going out at least. It's a pretty easy fight again, just a healer check, and it's fun to heal because there's always something to do. Moving over to the water here, you'll be facing Verdant Keeper Galistros, a large green bird. Having a few shaman here is massively useful because of their cleansing totem to mitigate a lot of the poison volley dot damage. He also puts a more dangerous poison on the tank, just dispel it as well. He'll cast poison stuff frequently so keep up with those totems and dispels. He cleaves, randomly charges players, casts feather bursts and puts a bleed on them, 
this hits hard, around or over 5k initial damage, so it can definitely one-shot lower geared players or Claudies. It's a pretty random mechanic. There's not much you can do about it unfortunately, except hope he doesn't charge your healers or shaman. Next up is Laymore, an emerald dragon. The main danger here is an orange crystal he'll throw on the floor, causing heavy AoE damage to whoever stands in the puddle. Spread out and drag the boss away from it. He also does Frost Novas, which could be lethal if they're not dispelled ASAP. There's some damage going on on the ranged as well, it looks like he's tossing red crystals at them, but it doesn't hit hard. It's a pretty easy fight in general, just one dangerous mechanic. The final boss, and definitely the hardest, is Guardian of the Dream, a large, Watcher-esque lady who can be pulled from across the lake to provide for an easier path to kite her, and she will definitely need to be kited around. She'll breed Fellfire, put fire patches on the ground, and drop static flowers which start to do AoE Hellfires. Turning on fire resistance aura would be a great idea. She'll also randomly jump to players, stunning them and doing some damage. Anyway, your tank will be taking plenty of damage too, due to strong bleeds and dots, and he'll need to keep dragging her around. It's a good idea to tank swap to avoid having the dots stack too high. If you die, and there's a high chance you might, Run back and rejoin the fight ASAP. It's a fun fight. Chaotic as hell, with so much damage going around and things to avoid. Kill her and you get some Nefarian loot and the fancy Emerald Drake mount. And that's about it. Dusk Haven's Emerald Dream is a great custom raid. And while there are some annoying bugs, I thoroughly enjoy it. And is definitely one of the highlights of the custom content on this server. That's all I've got for today. If you have any questions or want to add something I forgot to mention, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching and see you in the next video.